We are under the lights this evening as we get you set for another edition of Baseball on the Show. A good matchup here for you tonight between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Chicago Cubs. It's Baseball on the Show, and it's coming up next. Jose Quintana, the Colombian native, gets the call to start this one. Dan, any thoughts? Hey, Matt, we're getting a chance to look at a guy that's really struggled lately. ERA over five in his last three starts, so he's going to have to really improve on that one. Too many base runners, too many hits, and too many walks. He needs to get off to a good start and maybe throw up a zero in the first inning. Now in the box, Kevin Newman. It's been a really Kevin slow Newman. start to the season Newman. for him, as you can see by the April numbers on your screen. To first, Rizzo is there, and he'll take this to the bag himself, and there's your first out of the ball game. A chance here to check out the starting lineup for the visiting Pirates. Who are you focused on, Dan Plezak? Well, I think everyone should keep an eye on Gregory Polanco. He leads the team in the two most important power categories for me, home runs and RBIs, driving in guys and being able to drive yourself in. He's an impressive hitter, and it should be fun watching him do his thing in this one. Well, guys, as we look at the Cubs coming into play here tonight, they've been fairly punchless of late, losing last time out and, in fact, dropping six of their last seven. Yeah, Matty, in this sport at this level, you, you have to find a way to be a little bit realistic. You're not going to win every ball game. So they lost last game. Fine. Let's find a way to execute today and get on the winning side. And it'll be important to stay warm tonight. A chilly 44 degrees here at first pitch. Popped up. There to take it is Rizzo, and there are two away now. Third, the center fielder, number 10, Brian Reynolds. So stepping in, Brian Reynolds. And the home away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. Line but speared on a hop. Throw on to first gets him and the side is retired. Down in order go the Pirates. And now it will be the Cubs turn in a scoreless ball game. Williams is the man on the mound for the Pirates in this contest. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, you can't always judge a pitcher by the numbers. I know the ERA is into the fours coming into this start, but he's actually a pretty solid pitcher. And every once in a while, he can throw some decent games in there. It's not easy having an ERA under four in baseball. He's slightly over that, but this guy's a better pitcher than that ERA indicates. Infield in the overshift here, now the pitch. And here's a fastball called for strike one. Dero, Dan, we look at this Pirates ball club as they enter play here tonight. It was another loss for them last time out, and that makes them 2-8 and eight over their last 10 games. Yeah, guys, I'm interested to take a look at this team in game one of this road trip right now. They have to play better. They took it on a chin, recent homestand, only winning two games. But I'll tell you what, today they're putting a guy out on the mound that can execute down and away. I look for him to set the tone. High fastball right there with a two strike count. You know what that might be doing? Setting up the next pitch could be that hard slider down and away. Something breaking down and away off the plate. And another foul ball. in deep down the left field line and this will not be caught it's a foul ball the one two misses ball two well I think that pitch is the result of a lot of foul balls he might have tried to do a little bit too much with it trying to get him to swing through it but it just ended up taking off on it and a full count as that misses it's three and two now what an amazing A.B. right here, and what a message it sends to your entire lineup. This guy knows out on the mound he's going to have to battle today. And he'll finally just wear him down as this one swung on and missed for the first down. And 
second is the second baseman Jason Kipnis high in the air out to center field Reynolds is there now and he has it two gone the next hub up Ian Happ no one aboard for him and two gone here in the first now here it comes They'll try and entice him with a high fastball, but he wouldn't commit. It's ball one. Hey, they say solos won't kill us, but I got to believe this guy's looking to do exactly that. This is on the ground over to first. On to first on his own is Bell, and that ends the inning. Cubs are down in order. We are still scoreless. Josh Bell the next to hit. He'll start things out here in a tie ball game. And the pitch. Here's the pitch. And there are the umpires assigned to this one. Calling balls and strikes is Mr. Mike Fillmore. Hey, you know, D-Roll, Mike Fillmore, he'll give a little bit off the edges, but he gets the respect not only from the pitchers, but from the players because his zone is consistent. Yeah, as long as he's consistent, Dan, I'm okay with Mike Fillmore's zone. If a pitcher's pounding that zone, he wants to give a little bit off the outer edge, I'm okay with that. Had to sit back on the changeup, and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. The next one two pitch. Here's a high pop up. Under it is Rizzo. One away. That is it. The third baseman. Colin Moran. So striding in Colin Moran in past meetings with Jose Quintana. He's got a batting average of 444. First pitch fastball in there for a called strike. No score here as we play inning number two. And this is high, a ball and a strike. Not much behind this as this ball is looped over toward first. And this will get taken in at first for the second out of the inning. The right fielder, Gregory Polanco. So bases are empty here with two gone. And the left-handed hitting outfielder Gregory Polanco bats next. Out in front of it, strike one. Still looking for our first hit in the ball game. And now a curveball that bounces up to the plate. It's one and one. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. Half is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Pirates. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Stepping in, Jason Hayward. Field shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. Trying to work that slider to the outer half, but it misses 1 0. And a big swing by Hayward, but this is on the ground to second. And there's one away. Time for a look at the Buckos on D. And let's take a look at outfielder Gregory Polanco. Can play all spots in the outfield, from center to both corners, with a cannon arm and the ability to go in the gap. Stepping in now, Kyle Schwarber, as he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. He's back in the starting lineup for this one after sitting out last night's game. The 1-0. Is offered at and missed for the first strike. Bottom of the second here with no score. 
And a half swing here, but this is in there for a cold strike, too. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Now the pitch. Helpful. Waiting next is Anthony Rizzo. And he lost him here on 3-2 as that pitch misses. It's ball four. And I'm sure the manager is just fine with that. I mean, it's better to battle a slugger like that to the end and end up walking him than serving on up where he can really hurt. Anthony Rizzo stands in now. Here comes the first pitch. Down the first baseline. Uh, this gets foul. It's 0-1. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. And that'll get down out there near the wall. The relay, not in time, and he's in there with a double. Everyone knows that this guy's numbers are not where he wants them to be so far this year. But you never know by that swing. He looked fluid and confident driving that pitch for a double. We'll see if that gets him going a bit. Set to get his evening at the plate started, Victor Caratini. And it's been a real struggle for him with the bat so far this year, looking to get things turned around in a hurry. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. In tight here with the first pitch fastball that's 1-0. Perhaps a little low there. It's 2-0. He's going to have to have a talk with the umpire after this half inning. Because if he's not going to get those calls, he's got to come a little bit more over the heart of the plate. And that usually means damage done. Drilled to the right side. And that's through into right field for a base hit. And not in time as the run scores. Boy, that has to feel good as a hitter, D. Where you get that base hit to give your team the lead, you have to feel good when you get down to first base. Yeah, it's just a nice approach. You see him turn to his boys right there and get fired up with the dugout. 100%, not trying to do too much, able to quiet the moment down, center himself, and come through in a big spot. So now to the plate, Nico Horner. As he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. And they're runners at the corners now. On its way, the 0-1 pitch. And a check swing here, but he pretty clearly broke the plane, and it's 0-2 now. Pitch is mishandled behind the plate and it bounces away. Good job to corral this quickly as the runners hold on. Check swing, no swing, says the home plate umpire. Ball two. That's the human element of the game right there. Umpires are going to miss a couple calls. It's the pitcher's ability to stay composed and grind that's going to make him successful today. Slow roller down the third baseline, but a foul ball as it holds it two and two. Just off the outside that time, laid off for a ball. I don't think he can afford another base runner here. So whatever pitch he feels best about, whichever one he feels most comfortable with, that's the one I expect him to turn to. He got him. And it'll probably take a base hit now to get that runner across from third. Well, I'm glad we get another look at that beauty of a pitch right there. You can't spot a sinker in a better location because even if you do get the bat on the ball, there's not a whole lot you can do with that. Textbook sinker. Standing in now, Jose Quintana popped him up. Newman calls for it, makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. Only 
one in the inning for the Cubs. We'll go now to the top of the third. Cubs lead it one to nothing. Welcome back to Wrigley Field, home of the Cubs, who've proven to have one of the best pitching staffs in baseball this year. They enter the day near the top of the league in strikeouts, so this is a pitching staff that possesses a lot of dominant arms. One of them told me, the talent and pure stuff on this team is ridiculous. So as long as we're going after the hitters and commanding our pitches in the right spots, we'll have a lot of success. Most of the time, that's the case, and that's because we trust in our abilities. It's pretty clear these guys are some of the Lead best around the at keeping the opposition the off balance. Matt? Jacob. Thank you, Heidi. Stalling. Jacob Stallings will be the next hitter. He's the number seven hitter, but he's leading off the third after the first six guys in the lineup have been retired in order. Yeah, it's been a great start to the guy on the mound. It'll be interesting to see if they can find a way to get to this guy before he really settles in. And it's quickly 0-2. Nothing in two count and the pitch. This is on the ground over to first. Rizzo is there and he'll flip it to the pitcher covering for the out. And with one away let's give you a look at the standings in the NL Central entering play as you see where these two teams sit in relation to one another. Digging in the switch hitter, Cole Tucker, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Now here it comes. And that's in there for strike one. Expect the guy on the mound to keep attacking the zone. He wants a quick inning so he won't be nibbling. I fooled him there and a little pop up to the right side. There to take it is Rizzo and there are two away now. Batting up. The pitcher, Trevor Williams. Next to hit will be the pitcher, Trevor Williams. His guy's still looking at a zero in the hit column. First delivery to him on the way. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Sliced hard, but foul. Look out over there. Bases are empty here with two men out. Fouled away. Strike three called as he can't get the bat off his shoulders. Side retired. Down in order go the Pirates. They're on the short end of a one to nothing score. At the plate, Chris Bryant. He'll get us going in the home half of inning number three. The third base Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. A ball and no strikes. Easy take there on the sinker, well off the outside. Hey, you want to talk about being in the zone? This guy's been raking lately, and it all starts with his pitch selection. Two great takes, and he's almost daring the pitcher. Just go ahead and challenge him. Three and zero to him now. High and deep down the left field line, and no one will get this one. High and deep to left. This one's got plenty of distance into the bleachers and gone. Chris Bryant leaves the yard with a solo shot. Seven home runs for him on the year now as the Cubs are out in front now two to nothing. Hey, that's the price you pay right there when you try and sneak a fastball past this guy. Power hitter, and every power hitter in the league knows you got to start with the numero uno, number one, man. You got to get on the heater and adjust to everything else, and he did just that. Now batter, the second baseman, Jason. To the plate now, Jason Kipnis. 
as he'll get out ahead of a changeup and swing through it for strike one. So far, 0 for 1 with a flyout. Yeah. Right there, and it's quickly 0 and 2 now. Bases are empty here, nobody out. A ball and two strikes to Kipnis. You know, there aren't many guys that could just spit on an 0-2 pitch like that. Maybe it fooled him. We won't ever know, but it worked out. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. No, that's down. Having a hard time putting this hitter away here. And when I was looking at the tape on him from his last start, this is what I saw a lot of. He's not closing the door on guys, and, and when that's the case, they eventually get a pitch that they can do something with. Made a miss on the off-speed pitch that time. The Jason field. Kipnis is retired for the first yeah. down here in the bottom half of the third. So the bases are empty with one man gone, and that'll bring up the former first-rounder and Pittsburgh area native Ian Happ. Went about halfway there, but it's a called strike regardless. Bases are empty, one man out. Bounce towards the mound. Throw in time at first for route number two. Now back, right fielder, Jason Hayward. Here's Jason Hayward now. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Now a check swing, but he holds up in time. Ball one. Two out, nobody on. Swing and a little blooper to center. Tucker onto the grass. He can't get to it. This one's down. Boy, this guy's been swinging a hot stick lately. And there's just another example. And even when he doesn't hit one on the barrel, he still manages another base hit. Yeah, don't overthink it. When you're flowing like he is right now, he's hot as a pistol. Everything's falling. At the plate, Kyle Schwarber as the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for bowl one. Schwarber is a big threat in a matchup like this. He's got a ton of pop against right-handed pitching. Yeah, I think because of his approach. He's not a dead pull guy. You want to try and sneak a piece of cheese in or hang something over the heart of the plate, he's going to absolutely crush it. But anything going away from him goes right into his bat path. Now the 2-0 home. Ball inside. Anthony Rizzo would be next if they can keep this inning alive. Here it comes, the 3 0. Grounded up the first baseline. And that's a fair ball as it's through into right field. And he'll make it up safely to third, so they're at the corners now with two men out. And now time will be called here as you see the pitching coach making his way out to the mound to pay a quick visit. And that'll bring Anthony Rizzo to the plate as he'll take a look at a pitch too low. It's ball one. Two on, two out for him here in the third. The 1 0 is a changeup that's looked at for a ball. Has to be a challenge pitch coming up here. He probably doesn't want to flirt with loading the bases. This is on the ground over to first. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. Cubs get a run here thanks to this solo home run. We played three full. It's now 2-0 Chicago. 
Stepping in and ready for another shot. Kevin Newman back to the top of the lineup the as they're still looking the for their base first line. base runner in yeah, this one. Yeah. No doubt about Newman. that, Matt. They've yet to figure this guy out on the mound. He's looked great so far. He has, but we'll see if this second trip through the order changes anything. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments these hitters are able to make in the middle innings of this game. Now here's the pitch. Hey! Man, he's looking sharp so far. 80% of his first pitches are for strikes. He might be able to go the distance if he keeps this up. Now a flare out toward right center. Kipnis onto the grass. He gets there to make the play for the first now out of the Adam. inning. Left fielder, Adam Frazier. Riding in once again, Adam Frazier. He popped out in his first trip. Yeah, I don't mind him trying to drive the ball in the air, but he can't collapse the backside, and that's exactly what he did in his last at bat. Look for him to stay a little taller and keep that upper half a little bit more over. On to first, and that is two quick outs to start the fourth. The center fielder, number 10. Brian stepping into Reynolds. the box Brian Reynolds two away in the inning and Dan it looks like this could be another one two three inning form. Yeah he has really found a groove on the mound and it's been impressive to watch it'll be interesting to see how long he can keep this dominance up. Sent on the ground out to second Kipnis is there he'll whip this one to first in time and that ends the inning. Pirates are down on just four pitches they trail it here two to nothing. Welcome back to the north side of Chicago back here at Wrigley Field as we check in with Heidi. Thanks Matt in between innings I was able to catch up with the manager of the Cubs to discuss his thoughts on his lineup so far and overall he's really happy with the at bats they're putting together. It's still pretty early in the game but they've seen a lot of pitches already and he thinks the two go, runs they've pushed across so far is just the beginning the Jeffrey, given the quality of the at bats sure. they're putting together. Good stuff Heidi thanks. In there 0 and 1. Weak grounder back to the mound. And the inning begins with a quick out number one. Now back. So in now for Chicago. Nico Horner. He was a strikeout victim in his first try. Yeah, he's got to put that one behind him, especially with runners in scoring position. Those punch outs will stick with you a little longer. Lays off one and oh. One out, nobody on. Rounded weakly down the line toward third. Oh, and it eats him up a bit. Now back, the pitcher, Into the box, Jose Quintana. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. So far, 0 for 1 with a flyout. Now a late bunt attempt here, but he misses strike two. Horner leads off first with one away. Now a throw over, and he's back easily. And another throw over, and a dive, but he's back in there. Cubs pitcher at the plate trailing with a one and two count. Runners on first with one down. Now this is hit not all that hard out to second. Newman's got it. And an off balance throw is in time as he takes one away. Wow. So it's back to the top of the order now. And into bat next, former National League MVP Chris Bryant. And that last at bat when he went deep, he turned around a pretty good fastball. So I'm kind of thinking this guy's a good fastball hitter. So I might want to move that ball up and down and in and out and try not to throw it right down the middle of the plate. The 0 1 pitch. Behind 0 2 now. 
two runs, six hits. No errors so far for the Cubbies. And on 0 and 2, he misses with a fastball. Hey, I get it. He wants to set up that breaking ball down and away. But that 0 2 fastball wasn't even close. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. And did he go around? No, he did not. Ball two. A great job of holding up right there. Little two out lightning might ensue by one check swing holding up. So a full count now. Jason Kipnis would be next. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. Popped up. Bell in foul ground. And that retires the side. One hit, one left. On to the top of inning number five we go. The Cubs lead this one two to nothing. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Well, Matt, I talked with Pittsburgh's manager during the inning break about the Pirates' offensive production to this point. And he told me, overall, he's not happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They haven't had a single guy on base yet, so it's starting to feel a little desperate down here. But he said they've Leading unfortunately just been faced with some really great pitching today. The key going forward is to find any way they can to get him out of his rhythm on the mound. Now that may be a tall task, but they feel the little adjustments could lead to things turning around for them. All right, thanks, Heidi. A count of one and one to the Pirates' first baseman. In his career, Bell comes into action carrying a slugging line above 470. Obviously a potent hitter looking to do some damage right here. It's two balls and a strike to Josh Bell. Now the 2 1 pitch. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. Nearly a big fly to start the inning instead of foul ball. Into the windup, here comes the 2 2 pitch. High in the air out to center field. Hap is right there, one down. So still nothing against him on the scoreboard here in the fifth as we check out the league leaderboard for Team ERA. And you can see that these guys currently find themselves fourth in the NL in that category. Digging in to try it again. Colin Moran hit it hard but lined out in his first at bat. And that was one of the hardest hit balls they've had all game, Maddie. It's been a pretty feeble effort by his teammates on the offensive side. Yeah, that looked like a strike, but let me tell you, when you're staring at a big zero in the hit column, getting a call like that to go your way can feel like a big victory. The 1-1. One, one. I don't blame him for not coming over the heart of the plate. He circled this guy on the lineup card when he got to the yard today. He's been swinging one of the hotter bats in the game. And this will find the wall deep in the corner. Take a look at this again in slow motion. He tracks this thing all the way, gets his hands quickly to the zone, and just rips it down the left field line, just how they draw it up. Here's Gregory Polanco. The swing and lift a ball foul off to the left and out of play. Fly down in his first half bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. Good break to that one, and he's in command, nothing in two. Hey, you know in the back of your mind as a batter right here, he's got that nasty sinker. I know it's 0-2, but he might not be looking for the punch out. You have to find a way as a batter to get that two-seamer up in the zone, or you're going to ground into a double play. No runs, just one hit, and no errors so far for the Pirates. Hit hard up the middle. He's got it. Kipnis. On to Rizzo, and it's a double play. Side retired. Nothing doing here for Pittsburgh. They're still down. It's 2 nothing.
So digging in now, Jason Kipnis. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Yeah, but it was a good change up, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. Fastball on the first pitch, and it's taken for strike one. And some action now in the Pirates' bullpen. They've got a lefty and a right-hander up to throw. And here's one that misses to the Chicago second baseman. It's a ball and a strike. He obviously wanted that call in the corner, but if he continues to put the ball right there, he's going to get that call, and he's going to keep pitching as well as he is. Two balls and a strike to count. The 2-1 is looked at for ball three. Good job to work the count and put himself back in the driver's seat. Started off with one strike and now he's got to count in his favor three and one. The three and one pitch. Skied into straightaway right. On the move is Polanco. And he tracks it down. Nice play for the first down. And that'll bring in the Pittsburgh area native Ian Happ. First delivery to him on the way. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Sets the target low here and it misses 1 and 1. Half with a two and one count now. Aye. Two and two now. A swing and a high drive to right center field. Reynolds is on the move for it, and it's gone as they add still another. Solo home run here off the bat of Ian Happ. Seven home runs for him on the year now. And the Cubs have taken a 3-0 lead. Boy, this guy's hot right now. Hit a bomb yesterday and hit another tape measure shot today. When he gets hot, he hits him in bunches. This could be the beginning of one of those extended hot streaks. So that'll bring up Jason Hayward. Found it softly down the line toward first. But a foul ball here, 0 and 1. A hit in two tries for him so far. Just off the outside that time, laid off for a ball. Swing, line, drive. That's going to be trouble. And this one scoots all the way to the wall. And he is in at second base with a one-out double. Well, he was definitely struggling coming into this one, but I think we could say that cold streak is officially over. That's his second hit of the game, and it goes for extra bases. We'll see now if this game proves to be a huge turning point for him. Stephen Brault, the lefty standing six foot even, takes over the pitching duties here. Schwarber will be his first assignment down of the bullpen as he'll stand in with the runner in scoring position at second and one away. From the belt, the pitch hit down the line at first. Uh, this gets foul. It's 0-1. One out and a runner on second base. Swing and a miss on the slider, and he's quickly behind nothing in two. Well, he's following the code not to miss down and into a lefty everything on the outer half of the plate. Pitch taken several inches below the zone, in fact. Brault, a left-hander who goes an even six feet. He was selected in the 11th round back in the draft of 2013. I know this guy wouldn't go into the category of superstar, but to grind out the career he has being drafted where he was, my hat's off to him. Here he comes again, 
inside and a hair low. It's two balls and two strikes. He pulls this one into right. Polanco is back in plenty of time to put this away, however, and there are two gone. So a runner in scoring position with two men gone, and that brings in Anthony Rizzo. First pitch on its way, and he throws the fastball by him here, 0-1. And he fouls this one off. Here's the 0 and 2. One ball, two strikes, Miguel. Hey, this is a big pitch right here. Can't allow them to attack on any more runs. Let's see if he attacks his own or buries something in the dirt. Working for the punch out and the offering. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Cubs tack on another courtesy of this solo home run. Through five innings, it's 3 0 Chicago. Digging in for his second at bat, Jacob Stallings. He'll start things out in their half of the sixth as they look to shake things up here for a lineup that, quite frankly, has been non existent to date. No doubt about that, Matt. They've been completely overmatched to this point. One hit through five innings. I mean, what else can you say about the pitching they faced? Other than it's been fantastic. We'll see if that continues as we approach the later inning. And this is taken in for out number one. The batter, number three, shortstop, Cole Tucker. Now batting, Cole Tucker. He's 0 for 1 thus far. First offering on its way. Boys, we see the pitch count. It's hard to remember the last time we saw a guy pitch this efficiently. Hey, this guy has really been attacking the zone, and this lineup has been more than happy to swing at a lot of pitchers' pitches so far. Behind 0-2 now. Nothing in two count, and the pitch. Well, this is an approach we've seen him use effectively lately. Set up the inside, and then get him out with pitches away. And here's a ball hit in the air. On the move is Hayward, but this will land untouched. The one two. This is line to left. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. Yeah, Matt, he's locked in and pretty dominant since the first. So as long as he can get back in that groove with the next batter, he's not going to worry too much about it. Eric Gonzalez will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. Eric Gonzalez. Runner, runner, runner. Runner goes for second. Pitch is a cold strike. The throw. Short hop, but they got him. Great pick and tag to catch him trying to steal. It makes a lot easier for a catcher to catch and throw. Even though this throw bounces into second, poor jump at first base gives him the time needed to throw him out at second. Bases are empty here with two men out. Skied into very shallow right. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. Bucks go down quietly. They trail in this one, three nothing. Ladies Nick Birdie enters to do the pitching lead. in the bottom of the six. Now pitching for the Pirates, number 57. Next to bat will be Victor Caratini. He'll lead it off as we start the home sixth. The pitcher, Victor, ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Fly ball out to straightaway right field. Polanco has a read on it. He's got it one away. The batter, number two. Shortstop, Nico Horner. Now with the plate, Nico Horner, one for two in the ballgame thus far. 
First pitch coming. Here it is. Check swing, but he held up in time. Ball one. Birdie comes at hitters with a good hard fastball, one that's certainly fun to watch. He's a throwback to kind of guys that he likes his fastball. It's a good fastball, not the best fastball in the game, and he's not afraid to throw it. And you know what else, Matty D? He goes right at the hitters. Interesting sequence of pitches right there. A real ugly swing on a ball away, and it looks like the batter has a much better idea of what he's looking for after that second pitch. Now the 2 1. Waves and misses for strike number two. Yeah, Matty, I'm going to need a better approach out of the eight all hitter. He's hitting in the bottom of the order for a reason. He's got to be willing to work the count, grind it, get this pitch count up, and get on for the boys in front of him. So he sets him down swinging. Nico Horner becomes out number two this inning. Stepping in now, Jose Quintana. He offers at it and hits it in the air to left. And that'll get down for a base hit. Hey, I've been impressed with this guy. Not only has he thrown the ball well, but now he's mixing in a base hit late in the game, giving his manager options. Whether or not he wants to pinch run, keep him in there, go to the relief. I mean, he's opened up a whole weaponry box for the manager. Digging in next will be Chris Bryant. He gets a shot to hit here in the inning following the two-out single. Yeah, that hit might not amount to much, but anytime you could extend an inning and give a guy with plenty of pop a chance to swing it, the outlook of an inning changes dramatically. Fastball just inside. Now this is the kind of count this guy feeds on at the plate. You can bet he's geared to hit the fastball right here. The 2-0 on the way. Too tight with that one. 3-0. and Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. And this pitch misses for ball four. So that's going to move a runner into scoring position now with two away. He did not want to let the hitter off the hook with two outs. And now he's got a runner in scoring position to deal with. At the plate, Jason Kipnis. We'll see if he can come through in a clutch spot here. Two on, two out here in inning number six. Looking to wiggle out of this. Here it is. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. Perfect time for a mound visit right here. Just give him a breather, a chance to collect himself and get back to work. Now the 1 0. Boy, and that's about as bad as you can fool the guy. It's one and two. See, guys, he is human. Occasionally, an ugly swing right there. But he's having a monster season, so I'm going to give him a free pass. Skied in the air to straightaway left. And the two-out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Cubs strand a couple, but they're on top by a count of three to nothing. So the lineup flips over and digging in Kevin Newman. He'll lead it off here as we the begin inning base. number seven. Kevin. Starting to run out of time. Mm -hmm. They haven't been able to score any runs as we're moving late into this one. A perfect time for this leadoff guy to try to get on base and ignite a rally.
Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Hey, this guy's done a better job than expected. He's made some bad pitches in the strike zone, but so far he hasn't gotten hurt by him. Fouled off. Stung into the gap in right center for what should be extra bases. Running hard, he's digging for second. Arms pumping, he's hustling for third. And he'll get there as he kicks off the seventh with a leadoff triple. Now this guy out. smokes this thing, you hustling all Adam. the way around the third. So far, they posted nothing but zeros in this one, but he stands 90 feet away now, and they should be able to push him across. And that'll bring in Adam Frazier. And this one gets away. What a bad time for a wild pitch as the run will score from third. Wow, the pitcher has no one to blame but himself. Man on third, he just uncorks one. The runner alertly takes off immediately and gets their first run of the game just handed to him on a silver platter. The 1-0. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Schwarber is right there as he puts it away. No problem for the first down. Now batting, the center fielder, Brian. Now at the plate, Norbert. Brian Reynolds. 0 for 2 on his line thus far. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Now a ball lined to the left side. But this is a foul ball. Bases are empty. One man out. That's in there, and he's deep in the hole now, 0-2. And, it's a high fly ball headed for the left field corner. If it stays fair, it's gone. And this will wind up being nothing more than a long foul ball, and it'll hold the count at 0-2. This is line to left but pretty much right at the left fielder as he takes it in for the second out. The first baseman, number 55. Josh so the next to the Bell. plate for Pittsburgh, Josh Bell. It was a fly out for him in his last trip. Almost, Matty. Almost went deep his last A.B. Certainly just missed it. With this guy's big power, he's feeling pretty good at the dish. Look for him to try and get on something and drive it out of the yard this A.B. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. So one run on one hit, no errors, and no one left on base. We'll move on now to the bottom half of the seventh. Get up and stretch. The Cubs are on top, three to one. Robbie Erlin gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Robbie Erlin. Ian Happ will be the first one to greet him as he'll have to turn around and bat from the right side of the plate here. The last at bat, Matty B. We heard this guy's a good fastball hitter. He got a fastball and didn't miss it. We'll see if they pitch him a little bit differently this time and mix in some off-speed pitches. Now it looks like a right-hander's up and throwing in the Pittsburgh bullpen. And one and one as this one's in on the hands. A ball and two strikes. The count is one and two. The one two. That's a ball. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. Now the Cubs four hole hitter Jason Hayward. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Well he got a good pitch to hit last. Time. Oh and he has some trouble with it. And he'll flip it to the pitcher covering for the out. Well if you're going to bobble the ball you have to hope it's when a guy is lumbering down the base pass. He's no speedster so that was a good job to stay calm and make the recovery throw. 
in tight here with the first pitch fastball that's one and oh. We're in the seventh inning with a good finish brewing three to one our score. And that pitch misses in the dirt and it's two and oh now. Not even close with the one oh. He needs to get back in the zone but be careful. Work the quadrants. Down low and the plot thickens here three and oh. Popped him up. Newman is there for it. And that ends the inning. Three up, three down for the Cubs. As the lead remains three to one. Coming to the plate now, Colin Moran. A hit in two tries so far. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan, a bloop and a blast. They could certainly use that right now. One ball, no strikes to count. Now the 1 0. Hey. Tying run stands on deck, but it'll only matter if the guy in the box can get on base. Yeah, and that has to be his mentality at the plate right now, Matt. He can't be the hero, so he needs to do what he can to give the guy behind him a chance to be the guy. And this will find the wall deep in the corner. And he is in the second base with a leadoff double. That's what you call a clutch piece of hitting. Down two runs. He puts himself in scoring position and brings the tying run to the plate. We'll see what they do with the base open here. This one's getting interesting. Now time is called and this might be to buy a little time for that reliever to get loose. Bluff a move back to second base just to make sure the runner wasn't getting any ideas out there. Into the box now, Gregory Polanco just gets a piece of it, strike one. So far this year against Southpaws, Polanco is below the Mendoza line, the batting average under 200, unfortunately. He'd be the first to tell you he's not happy with his batting average this season, but he can beat you in a variety of different ways, and he has to because he wouldn't be here otherwise. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. And he wasn't going to hit that one with an or. The strikeout, and there's one gone. Pretty textbook breaking ball for the punch out right there. Got it to bend a lot, and by the time it got there, it had fallen completely out of the zone. Not much you can do with that pitch. Standing in now, Jacob Stallings, as he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. Curveball taken for strike two. Well, he's done a real nice job with that breaking ball in this start. That's not the first time he's locked the guy up with it. On the line, that's a base hit in the left field. He pulls into second safely as they also push across a score to make it a one run game. That will drive a pitching coach crazy. He has the hitter down 0 2 in the count, and instead of making him chase it something off the plate, he grooves one that's driven down the line for a run scoring double. Have to make better pitches on an 0 2 count. going to have a conference at the home plate area so it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. Dan Winkler come on to pitch here and he'll move into the number five spot in the lineup now on the double switch. Steven Sousa is into the ball game as well as he'll slide into the pitcher spot hitting ninth now on the double switch. And that's inside for a ball one and oh a hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ball game. 
this one's on the inside corner one and one I know he stole a strike right there but he better be careful with that curveball that's coming across and catching a lot of plate and if he stays back he's going to drive that thing with some serious authority and it's fouled away Slow little roller to third. Oh, and he can't come up with it. And this is a case of a hitter's reputation for seating him. The ball was a little dribbler to the left side, but he knew the guy had speed, so he rushed it and ends up unable to make a clean play. That's another example of why speed is such an offensive weapon. Line drive base hit. Throw comes in quickly now, so that tying run will be forced to hold on at third here, still now with that, only one away. Kevin Boy, there's a bullet Nuno. base hit right there, but you have to hold there, d -Row, to make sure that gets down and isn't caught for a line drive double play. Yeah, you have to play the game right there and respect the infield and respect the line drive. I know he wants to get a ribby for his buddy, but that's the way the game's played. Kevin Newman is next as he finds himself behind 0-1. One out with the possible tying and go-ahead runs on base here. One attempt, but this one might have too much on it. He'll come home with it. They get the force at the plate. And I think if this squeezes of the suicide variety, that run scores easily. But instead, they tried the safety squeeze there, and it didn't work out as they had hoped. So here's Adam Frazier. It's been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far, but his guys were looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. Craig Kimball enters the game in a save situation, but he'll be asked to get four outs here instead of the standard three. to hold the lead here's the delivery ready with the 0 and 1 that's taken now it's 0 and 2 fouled away big spot Two out, possible tying and go ahead runs on base. Thought about it, but he holds up on the knuckle curve one and two. Got him. So the damage winds up not being as bad as it could have been as they'll strand the bases loaded. This side is retired. So one run here on three hits, one error in the inning, and three left. Home half of the eighth, straight ahead. The Cubbies are in front, three to two. Kyle Crick is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Stepping up to the plate, Anthony Rizzo. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. The first baseman, Anthony Rizzo. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Nope, that's the ball. And a fastball is off the plate away. It's ball one. Crick, a native Texan. He was selected in the first round back in 2011. Yeah, he has turned himself into a really nice ball player. I wouldn't put him on a superstar nope. level, but you know what? They didn't miss with this pick either. You go into high rounds and you carve out a career the way this guy has, nice pick. Swing and a liner. And that's a base hit, so a chance for some important insurance here to kick off the bottom of the eighth. Hey, guys, right there, you look for weaknesses. Can a guy come in? Can he command in? Obviously not the case in this situation. He went to the well outside half three times, and eventually the batter made a nice adjustment. A ball of no strikes. He's working on a one for three thus far.
hit on the ground down the first baseline but a foul ball one and one. From the belt the pitch. This one everything we could have hoped for three to two in inning number eight. Fastball called strike three and there's the first out of the inning. Yeah as they say there's a hole in his swing in that location so a good job there of exploiting that. That can be real hard for some guys to overcome when teams start figuring out what locations you just can't handle. Ready to deliver here's the first pitch. High in the air out towards shallow right. Polanco has a read on it. Makes the play and there are two gone now. Into the box now, Steven Souza. And he's getting his first plate appearance here in the eighth after entering off the bench just a little bit ago. Has a look, now the pitch. Now a ball pulled hard but foul off to the left. Two out with the man at first. Unable to find the zone with the slider. You know, something to keep in mind, they're really burning through that bullpen. And this is only the first game of the series. Definitely could have an impact on the rest of the series and maybe even the whole week ahead. A ball and two strikes now. One two offering looked like a slider that time but it's two and two. Waved at and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance at hitting that one and the inning is over. One left for the Cubs. They're up three to two. Set to start the ninth in this one. Standing in, Brian Reynolds. He'll swing it from the left side right here. Tough situation. Down one here on the road, trying to score off one of the game's top closers. They've got the work cut out for him. 0 oh 1, here it comes. It to the left side, scooped up, and the off balance throw gets him. Nice play for the out. Now that the Cubs are into their bullpen now, as there are the final numbers for their starter. He was on point from the get go this evening. One of the big keys to having a good pitching performance is not being afraid to throw the ball into the strike zone, and this guy certainly wasn't in this one, didn't allow a walk all game long. So that'll bring up Josh Bell as he'll take a look at an off speed pitch here that misses for ball one. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. And a strike to even the count. One and one. Now the pitch. Late swing and a ball line fouled into the seats past the third base dugout. Now a fastball, but that's easy to lay off, and it's back to even at two and two. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Oh, and you can tell he wanted to hold off, but he swings through the inside pitch anyway, and he becomes out number two. Really good pitch right there. So you're moving the ball all around the strike zone, and then what do you do? You come in. That's a hard pitch for any hitter to do anything with. Just really makes it difficult to get that bat head out. So now to the plate, Colin Moran. As he'll take a look at his strike on the outside corner, it's 0-1. He's 2 for 3 and looking for more here. And this is swung on and missed. So now they find themselves down to their final strike tonight. 
interested to see what the pitcher goes to now. After getting that late hack on the curveball, does he speed him up with some velocity? Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. Yeah, they needed him a little bit earlier in this one, but he takes the mound in the eighth and records the final four outs. Four out save. Job well done. Three to two, the finish in tonight's game. Chicago took the lead in the second inning and rode that until the very end. Jose Quintana earns win number four on the season. Craig Kimbrell records four outs on his way to the save, his 11th of the campaign. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Pleszak, Heidi Wachney, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to theshownation.com.